after I show you uh, how trivial the solution to your homework was, um, then we're going to do something else that kind of shows a uh, interesting kind of an example of how programming can benefit you in some other aspects. Like let's say you're a web programmer or something like that. I'm going to show you how you could write a tool that can benefit you. Um, so for your homework assignment, I know we were dealing with the Caesar Cipher stuff. So here's our encrypt. Um, you had to add to it for it to handle non-characters, correct? Is that the first part? So you had to encrypt for so that it rotated upper and lowercase letters 26 spots, or I'm sorry, 13 spots. Um, and so it properly encrypted and ignored everything else, correct? Then you're supposed to write the decrypt method. Is that what the homework assignment was? I just accurately described the homework assignment. So the, now who didn't get the homework assignment done? Everybody else got it done or did everybody else not raise their hand? Just, did you do homework this time? <laughs> one time. So you've only not turned a homework assignment in in any class one time? This week? This week? <laughs> I've turned in all my homework this week. <laughs> Last week I've turned in all my homework. Except once. Except once for you. All right. So the idea here would be if we uh, uh, have something like this. This is a secret. Here, let's, uh, let's capitalize secret. This is a secret message. It should encrypt this by rotating each character 13 spaces in the alphabet. So if it's a lowercase character, it should rotate to a lowercase character. If it's an uppercase character, it should rotate to an uppercase character. If it's not a letter, it shouldn't do anything. Just leave it alone. That makes sense? All right. So let's finish writing our encrypt. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little private function here that returns a Boolean called is letter. And is letter is going to take a char in as a parameter. And we're going to create two strings. String, well actually we'll just create one string. String letters is equal to I did. I pressed caps lock. Oh my gosh. There. Did I get all of them? Ish. Close enough. See? Caps lock still on. So this will return true if the character I pass it is a letter and false otherwise. So I created a big string with all the letters in it, all the upper and lowercase letters, and then I'm going to return the index of C inside that string not equal to negative 1. Assuming it's not equal to negative 1, which means I didn't find it. That means, yes, I found it. That means, yes, it's a letter. Return true. Make sense? So I wrote a little function, I made it private, so we can only access it inside of this class, and this determines if something is a letter. So, if this dot is letter s dot char at i, if that's a true statement, then I want to do my encryption like we did last time, okay? But my encryption needs to be able to rotate upper and lowercase letters. Make sense? So here's my encrypt char. How do I detect if a character is uppercase?
How would you ask that question? Because if it's an uppercase letter, I want to rotate it on the uppercase letter chart. If it's a lowercase letter, I want to rotate it on the lowercase letter chart. So for starters, I want to be able to ask the question, if it is an uppercase letter. How do I ask that? How do I ask the question, is C, this guy, an uppercase letter? Go ahead. You could say if C is equal to C, like uppercase, so you just use the two uppercase method. It's like method character dot two uppercase of C. If those two are equal, then, then char C would be um, an uppercase letter. You mean like that? That's not even close to what you said, but that's a better answer. Okay. Maybe that I had no idea what it what that would look like. Well, sure you do. When we talked okay, about chars. Yeah, 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 that would work. That yeah. Would work. yeah. So I'm asking, is C greater than or equal to A and is C less than or equal to Z? All in uppercase. If that's a true statement, I must be dealing with an uppercase letter. Right? Seeing deer in headlights. Is there something confusing about this one? C is a char, right? What are chars? If you had to concisely describe what a char is, what would you say? A char is not a class. Char is a primitive type. I'll get you started. Please tell more. KK, thanks. Yeah, a little too close to Thanksgiving, aren't we? What do you guys do for Thanksgiving? Is, the, uh... Is it a bird? Are you just Googling what Amish do for Thanksgiving? <laughs> Let me Google that. What's a char primitive type? If you had to tell me in detail what a char primitive type is, what would you tell me? Actually, that's not correct. It represents a char. That char ultimately gets mapped on the Unicode character set table, right? What is a char actually? <laughs> okay, what kind of number? Positive integer. Okay, so we're getting there. What size? Okay, so it's a it's a unsigned sixteen bit integer. Unsigned meaning we don't need to store negative numbers. So it's zero to sixty five thousand five thirty five. I don't expect you to remember the 65,535 thing, but you should know that a char is actually an unsigned 16-bit integer. The very least, you should know that it's an unsigned integer. I'll take that. Okay? Forget about the 16-bit thing. It's important trivia knowledge, but you should know that chars are represented as numbers. <laughs> that's the, that's the, I just keep dumbing this down. <laughs> you should be able to grunt. When you hear char, grunt. Okay, so since chars are actually numbers, we can apply greater than, equal to, less than, all those things. We can apply those things to it, right? So I'm asking, is this char greater than or equal to this char? Which is essentially saying, is the integer value associated with the variable C greater than or equal to the integer value associated with the character A, the char A? Make sense? And is it less than or equal to Z? If it's in that range, if C is in that range, I must be dealing with an uppercase letter. And if I'm dealing with an uppercase letter, I want to do one thing. Else, I want to do the exact thing we used to do. How could I modify this code to work for uppercase letters? And actually, this is what I'm going to do. 
sugar to make this even cleaner. This is my conversion code, right? That we wrote last time. That works for converting a lowercase letter to its encrypted equivalent, its ROT13 equivalent, correct? What do I need to do in the event that I'm looking at an uppercase letter rather than a lowercase letter? Making the assumption that we're only ever going to call this method with letters. We guarantee that right here. And this guy's called this.source, not s. Okay, so what do I need to change in this if statement so that this code will work for uppercase letters? In the return, uh, return in the return line, uh, change the character you're returning to, to uppercase. Okay, but I I know that it's an uppercase letter up here, so I'm going to need to make some sort of modification. Do the magic so that the code below works for uppercase. I don't disagree with you. You're saying that if we know it's an uppercase letter, we can just return the uppercase version of that. Correct? Right. But it still wouldn't have worked because we actually got the index of C, which is, if it's an uppercase letter, where would we find C inside of that string? We would not find it. Correct? Mm -hmm. There's one line we can put in here to make this work. If I'm dealing with an uppercase letter, what do I want to do? Change everything to uppercase. What's everything? All the alphabet. How do I change map to uppercase? So if I'm dealing with an uppercase letter, make map the uppercase alphabet. Then do the same crap we did before. That make sense? Okay, so that makes our encrypt char work for both upper and lowercase letters now. So if I'm looking at a letter, encrypt that letter. If I'm not looking at a letter, what do I want to do? Just tack on the letter we're dealing with. Encrypted. Twice. I did it twice. Did it <laughs> didn't, I didn't copy that time. <laughs> the previous time I didn't copy. Did I? No, I typed it that way twice. It takes talent. I must have, one of my fingers must be bad from the number of executions I've been <laughs> performing. <laughs> okay, this makes sense. If I'm dealing with a letter, map the letter using my updated version of encrypt char that works for upper and lowercase letters. If I'm not dealing with the letter, then just tack whatever it currently is on. If it's a question mark, leave it as a question mark. If it's a space, leave it as a space, so on and so forth. Make sense? So now when I run this program, I should get an encrypted version of my string. So there's all my uppercase guys. My spaces were left alone. We got the question mark there at the end. Look legit. Okay, so that was the first part of your homework, right? Questions about that? 
Second part of your homework was to write a method called decrypt. <laughs> Did I do it again? Yeah. Okay. Decrypt. I'm good there. All right. Well, let's see. I need to actually get the string first. I'm going to have this guy take a string as a. Well, hold on. Hold on. Do we actually change? We don't actually change our internal. So for decrypting, we're going to have to have this guy taking a string as a parameter. Well, in order for this to make sense, instead of returning, we can return the encrypted string, but we really need to send this dot source, overwrite it with encrypted. That way this object state is now updated. Does that make sense? So our object, when we first build it, we take in a string as a parameter. And we store that string locally. Now, what are we doing? When we encrypt it, we're going to ultimately return that encrypted version of the string, but we're also going to overwrite our source with the encrypted version. So now our object holds an encrypted string. Make sense? Decrypt does this. Return this dot encrypt. See, yeah, I thought that was going to be a mistake. The, the, the 13. So, yeah. So, we have our initial string. This is a secret message. We create our new Caesar object passing the plain text string in there, right? Then we print out whatever's returned by c.encrypt. Then we'll print out whatever's returned by c.decrypt. Now to prove system.out.println c. Do we ready to get? Oh, whatever. Here, let's just do this real quick to prove it. We'll write a method public void display. We'll just display the source. And then we'll change encrypt and decrypt to not return values anymore. They just do the encryption and store the stuff. I'll put this display method above decrypt just for organizational purposes. All right, so what does encrypt do? It does all the crap we just had it do. And at the very end, rather than returning the encrypted string, we just set our source to the updated encrypted string. So now our Caesar object holds a jumbled up string. When we call decrypt, we're going to call encrypt again and hopefully see that it decrypts it. So we'll save that. So now inside driver, we'll say c dot encrypt and then c dot display. And we'll see that we get our encrypted version of our method message. That make sense? Then we'll say c dot decrypt, then c dot display. And we get our original message. That makes sense? So the haha -ha moment here was that decrypt is identical to encrypt. 
Because you're just rotating at 13, and there's 26 characters in the alphabet. Does that make sense? Okay, so questions about that. Okay, how many of you have ever written anything in HTML? I think almost all of you probably have because you did something in the 150 class, right? Although I love how three people rose their hands. Okay, uh, in that class, did you create a web form? Like text boxes and that kind of stuff? Okay, so as a review, I'm going to open up a we're going to create a quick web page. All right. So we're going to say HTML Just for our starting point, I'll just have a big line that says blah. Okay, so this is a simple web page that's going to have a title that says test page, and in the body of the document, we'll just have in big bold font the word blah. <clears throat> I'm going to make this whole document plain text. And then I'll increase its size again. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my desktop. I'm going to save this as blah.html. That way we can look at it in a web browser. Okay? And I'll, it asks me, are you sure you want to use .html instead of .text? Yes, I do. Okay, so there's my blah.html. Let's see. Here's that file that we just created right here. I'll double click on that. And it opens up in a web browser and there's our blah. So this, what does a web browser do? A web browser converts text, converts HTML code that looks kind of like this, which is its own domain specific programming language and turns it into pretty pictures. Because of course this is gorgeous. Make sense? So that's what a web browser does. A web browser is a converting tool. It receives crap that looks like this, and it formats it into stuff that looks like this. Now for web forms, we're going to create a form. Actually, we'll just go ahead and fix it. Proper HTML has all these things surrounded by double quotes.
I just don't like the format. See how it's changing all my double quotes to this like weird syntax? Well, I didn't do it on that last one. Okay. I just wonder why it does that. All right, so when I type all that in, I'll come into my web browser, I'll hit refresh, and we get a web form. Okay, type some stuff in there, type some stuff in there, and we'll see this last one is password, except it should have been password. Oh, that must have been the quote things there. So let me fix that. I need to search for all occurrences of that guy and replace it with that guy. And then all occurrences of this guy and replace it. All right, save that. Reload. Okay, so now we have a password box. That makes sense? Okay. Um, now, usually we might have these things one line at a time, but that's more of a layout formatting thing. I want to keep this uh, um, uh, I, I keep it looking like this for our simple example. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to have an interactive program. And the program is for building web forms. Okay? Let's say it's actually for building web pages. And what it's going to do is it's going to build up a big string that looks like this, followed by this, followed by this. And we probably want to ask for the title and insert the title in there. Followed by this, followed by this, followed by this. And then we're going to have zero or more inputs. That makes sense? And then we'll go ahead and at the very end when they said they're done with inputs, we'll ask them what they want their submit button to say on it. Right now our submit button should say, actually it says submit, is it not text, is it, um, oh, it's value. There we go. That'll work. There we go. We'll ask them what they want their button to say on it. So what we're going to do is we're creating a web form builder. They answer some uh, some uh, questions, and based on the questions, uh, based on the, our answers to those questions, it will build a string like this. We should then it'll output it. We should be able to then copy it, paste it into our blah text document, save it, reload our web page, and it should show us our updated web form. Does that make sense? So just because we know a little bit of HTML now, we can create an automated program that writes all this crap for us. Kind of make sense? All right. So let's go into our driver. Actually, let's build this as, a, as another object, practice building object. So I'm going to right click. We're going to say new class. We're going to call this web builder. Actually, let's call it let's call it form builder. Okay. And our form builder is going to build up a string. So we're going to have something called the page. That's ultimately going to be our final string. We're going to keep building it up one element at a time. And ultimately, in the end, it should look something like this. Poss probably all on one line. HTML doesn't care. If we would have put all this on one big long line, that would have been fine. It ignores white space. All right. So now our constructor is 
We'll take no parameters, and we'll put all of the default stuff into our string. That is all the stuff that will always be there. That's everything up to this point. That makes sense? Then it needs to ask us for the title. And then it can finish building everything up to this point. All right. So, actually, let me copy everything up to here. So let's copy all that text. So we're going to start with this dot. The page is equal to that. I'll take all the spacing out. Start off like that. Okay, that's what it initially looks like. Now we need to ask them some information. How do we read information in from the user? Using scanner. So we're going to go ahead and create for us, and I'm going to actually make this variable private because we always make variables as we make them private and then loosen the security if we need to. So I'll make another private variable of type scanner. And it's going to yell at us. It wants us to import that's interesting. Usually it gives us the uh, the fix for that, but whatever. Oh, haha. <laughs> I didn't give my variable a name. Okay, so in any case, we have our. Uh, now, what what's this guy called? What are these called? These two things up here. What's the vocabulary word that address, that describes those in object oriented languages? Mm. No, everything I've highlighted. This whole this whole line. Each of those defines. Go ahead. They're fields. Okay? They are variables that are associated with a specific instance of an object, but the vocabulary term for them is fields. So maybe the first thing we do in our constructor is we go ahead and give the input some value. The input is equal to a new scanner built with system.in, which is the keyboard. All right. Then we'll add some stuff to our page string all the stuff we know about. But now we need to prompt the user to enter in a title. System.out.println, or let's see, print. Please enter the page. Actually, let's not be too, too nice here. Enter page title. And then we'll go ahead and read that in. So we'll say the input is equal to the input concatenated with, I'm sorry, not the input, the page. Page is our string. Is equal to the page concatenated with the input dot next line. So we'll read in whatever title they put in there. Okay, then we'll add some more stuff, everything up to this point. Following our title, you know, whatever we typed in, all the way down to the beginning of our form for right now. So we'll say the page is equal to the page concatenated with all that stuff. That makes sense? Okay, 
Now, we're also going to have another string. called the footer. And we want this string to be everything that comes at the very end after all of our input form items. We're building a sandwich. So in this constructor we get the title of it in the first part. Then we get, we also go ahead and hard code in the end part. And then we can add fields in the middle. And as soon as we're done adding fields we can then say Output my HTML. Give me my final answer. So I'm going to steal those three lines there. And we'll say the footer is equal to all this stuff as a string. Okay, that makes sense? So we got the top bun, <laughs> we got the bottom bun, now we just need to be able to read in stuff in the middle. So for now, we'll go ahead and give ourselves a public method called 2HTML string. And this guy's going to return a string. And we're going to return the page concatenated with the footer. Now, we actually need the meat of our sandwich. So we're going to say private string the body. And in our constructor, we'll go ahead and start the body off as the empty string. Initialize it to the empty string, because we still have to read that in. Now in our two HTML string method, we have the first part of our page. So you can think of this as the header. We probably could have named it the header, but we didn't. We have the end of the page, the footer. And in between, we're going to have the body. So we'll actually put our sandwich together and return that string. Make sense? So just to test the starting point of this, we'll go into driver. We're going to create an instance of our form builder, FB. This is a new form builder. And just by doing that, it's going to ask us for some input. Why? because the constructor creates our scanner object and actually prompts us for something. So this program does something inside of this constructor even though we haven't actually prompted for anything. It all happens inside the constructor. So we'll do that, then we'll say system.out.println fb.toHTML string and see what it produces for us. Okay. So I'll go ahead and run this. It wants us to enter in a page title, my test page, and then it outputs the HTML. I'll go ahead and capture that HTML. We will overwrite that with it. Save this. Go into our document here and see that we have a page that shows nothing, but notice the title, my test page. Make sense? So now we need to start adding some fields. So just so we have stuff we can work with. We need to give them a menu. All right, 
So I'm going to go back into Form Builder. Form Builder is going to have a method that returns nothing called Show Menu. And Show Menu is going to give them their options for input types. So we're going to kind of put together a an awesome looking interface. So we'll give them our menu. Option 1 add text field. Option two, add password field. Option three, done. Make sense? And then we'll give them a prompt. And then we're going to read in their answer. Depending on what the answer is, they either gave us a 1, a 2, or a 3. If they gave us a 1, we want to create a new text field. But to create a new text field, we need to ask them a couple pieces of information. We need to find out what they want the name of that text field to be. That make sense? If they entered in a password, we also need to know what the name of that field is. This is like the variable name for a form. So if they enter in anything but a three, we need to read in as another piece of information. Make sense? So if the choice dot equals A three. We need to ask them what their title of their submit button should be. Make sense? If they say that they're done, we want to create a final input with a submit button that says something. Because all forms are going to end in a submit button by our simple example. Okay? So, We'll prompt them system.out.print. What would you like the submit button to say? And then we're going to read that in. And we can reuse our choice string because since we already knew which one they entered, we can just go ahead and. Uh, um, fill it in with some new information. So we'll say the choice is equal to the input dot Actually, we don't even need to do that because we'll do the same thing we did above. We'll build it in there like we did above. So we'll go ahead and say the page is equal to the page concatenated with everything up to
this. Because we're adding in a final input field, which is a submit button, and its value will be press me. Okay, now I like to have all of my types surrounded by double quotes. It's a personal thing, so I'm going to, we forgot to do that with the submit button. Now, notice that submit doesn't show up in blue. I'm building a string that actually has double quotes as part of the string. Does that make sense? Yet, double quotes are actually beginning and string beginning and end string delimiters. So I want Java to treat this guy as the character double quote, not as the end of the string double quote. And you do that with the escape character, which is a backslash. So you put a backslash before any character that might have a, a secondary meaning, and that tells Java, treat that guy as just the character double quote. Make sense? Same thing there. Same thing there. So then we need to put in a final actual ending double quote. And that builds us everything up to, but not including our value. Go ahead. Why didn't you put this in the body? Why didn't I put this in the body? You, you're putting it in the page, the string to page. Oh, you're, we, we do one in the body. You're right. Thank you. We're building up the center of the sandwich. Okay. So, after this first part, we want to concatenate on the input dot next line. Let me go ahead and minimize this for a second. Okay. That's whatever we read in for what our submit button should say. Okay, and I'll end that line there, just so we don't roll off the end of the screen too much. We'll just put a second line. So for the first part of this input type, I'm going to put in a bunch of hard-coded text, followed by whatever they said they wanted their button title to say. Then we concatenate it on the button title. Finally, we need to concatenate on the last part. So we'll say the body is equal to the body concatenated with that, but we need to do an escape character on that double quote, because that's actually the end double quote here. That's this guy right there, which we want to be treated as the character double quote, not as the end of our string. Make sense? So that's what we'll do if they ask if they ask for choice number three, which means you're done building the string. And if that's the case, then what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead. Well, we, we don't need to do it there. We're just going to not show them a menu. Else, if they didn't say they were done, they must have wanted to add a text field or a password field. Make sense? So we're going to need to read in the name of that field. So we're going to say if the choice dot equals a one, they must want to do a text field. Otherwise, they must want to do a password field. 
So I'm going to create a little string in here called field type. And if I enter it in a one, I'm going to say field type is equal to text. Otherwise, they must have entered in a two, and I'll say field type is equal to password. All right. So now we know what the field type is for this guy. So the last piece of information I need to get from them, I need to ask them for, is the name of that field. So we'll steal our string from up here. What would you like the field's name to be? Okay, so now we've prompted them for that. We have all the information we need to build our string. So we're going to come in here. We're going to steal the first part, which is input type equals up to that double quote. So we'll say the body is equal to the body concatenated with that string. We're going to take that string and we can concatenate onto it field type. Then we'll take that, that string and concatenate onto it everything up to this point, up into the name. doing our couple of escape character double quotes, one for the end double quote on field type, and then one for the beginning double quote for name. Then we'll concatenate on the input dot next line, just like we did above. Finally, we can just steal that same line from up there to put our end end cap. So we concatenated on whatever we read in for the name. And then there's our last piece. So if they entered in a one or a two for adding a text field, we want to read in the, everything we need for that text field, build the string, add the string to our body, but since they didn't say they were done, what must, we, what, what, what must they want to do? Potentially add more. And how do we ask them to add more? Show the menu. So we'll say this dot, Show menu. That makes sense? So what does the show menu function do? Or show menu method? The show menu method shows a menu, asks them to type in a one, a two, or a three. If they enter in a three, we get all the information we need for the submit button and we're done. But if they enter in a one or two, we get the information we need for that particular input field and then show them the menu again to potentially give us some more crap. So notice that the show menu method calls itself within itself. That's called recursion. Or a recursive call. Recursion means that a method calls itself. Which makes perfect sense here, right? It's what we want to happen. How do we ask them what they want to do next? Well, we show them a menu. They enter in a one or a two. How do we ask them what they want to do next? Well, we show them a menu over and over, and over again. Make sense?
Okay. So let's test this. Let's go back to out to driver. We will build our form builder right there, which will ask us for the title of the page. Then we'll say form builder. Well, actually, let's not even ask them for the title of the page yet. Let's do that inside the form builder. We'll have that guy show the menu, which means that we can make show menu private. Doesn't need to be a public method if we're only calling it from within, inside the, within the class. So when we build a form builder now, we'll read in the page title, build all the prerequisite stuff, and then show them the, the menu for the first time. Which should do all the extra fancy stuff for us. And then we'll say system.out.println fb.2html string at the very end. So that's all our main looks like. Build an instance of form builder and then print out it to HTML. The thing is we're going to spend some time inside that constructor. And let's see how this works. All right, enter the page title. My test page. All right, now we're going to uh, we're going to add a text field. Call this first name. Add another text field. Last name. Add another text. Or let's add a pass. Uh, let's add another text field. Username. And then add a password field. Password. Finally, press three for done. And let's say uh, login is what we want our submit button to say. So it produces an HTML string for us. We'll copy that, paste it. That's the code that it produced for us. I saved it. We go into Chrome and run it. First name is here, last name, username, and password as a password with our login button. Does that make sense? So we just wrote a little tool that takes something that's usually kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not that it's hard. It's that if a human being is writing this stuff all the time. It gets a little bit kind of like, eh, too many less thans, too many greater thans, too many slashes, things like that. So instead, what we did is we wrote a little tool, and this tool did what? This tool allowed us to, it was hard to write up front, a little bit, but not, not really that difficult, right? But a little bit difficult to write up front. But now we can use it to build as many web forms as we want. Okay, well, let's make this thing a little bit more usable now. Don't you think we might be interested in having line breaks between these, these uh, fields, right? We might want to have a, this text box on one line, then the next text box on another line, the next text box on another line. We might want to have some control over this, correct? So we're going to go back into our code. We're going to go into our menu, and we're going to add some more options, and ultimately make our done not choice three, but choice something else. Add a line break. Okay. So, to add a line break, and then we're going to make our, we'll make that choice three and done choice four. Okay. So, if they enter in choice four, that means we're done.
Else if they entered in choice three, we just want a line break. And to do a line break, we're just going to concatenate onto the body that line. That's a break. So that's the HTML code for a line break. So I just made a couple little couple little changes there. Go ahead and run our program again. Page title, test page. Uh, let's add a text field. We'll keep it short this time. Username, add a password. Password. Oh, I actually kind of screwed it up. Let's run it again. Because <laughs> I wanted to put a line break between those two. So this is our test page. We'll add a text field, name, username. Then we'll add a line break. So with three. Oh, everybody relax. Oh, haha. I forgot to call my menu recursively. When we, when we do a line break, we're not done. Right? We're only done if we hit a four. If we do a line break, we're going to say this dot show menu. That makes sense? Test page, add a text field name, username, put in a line break, put in a password field name, password, then say we're done with a four. Um, make our button say login. Here's our output code. Paste it in there. Save it. Reload our web page. And there's that. We could have chosen to put another line break in after that other guy. Make it kick down a line. No, we didn't. We, it certainly would have worked, right? So now we've added the ability to put line breaks in there. Okay. Well, what else might we want to do? We might want to have a label that labels a specific text field. Well, let's go ahead and add a label. Add the ability to do labels. So in our form builder, just so we don't have to change some of the other stuff, Let's add an option zero. Add a label. Okay. So if we enter in a four, we are just spitting out. Uh, give us our submit button. We're done. If we're entering in a three, put a line break. If we're entering in a zero, We need a label. What would we like the label to say? We need to prompt them. Then we need to say, oh, well, we're definitely going to show the menu again here, so we'll leave that in there. We're going to say the body equals the body concatenated with the input dot Next line. Okay. For our label. So a label is just going to work by putting just some text in there. So I'll go ahead and run this again. Page title is test page. We're going to add a label. Label is going to be username with a colon after it. Enter. Let's then add a text field. Field's name is going to be username. Then let's add a page break or a line break. 
3. Then let's add a label, password with a colon. Then let's add a password field, 2. Then let's add another line break. Finally, let's say we're done. We'll have our button say login. There's our output. Paste in our HTML. Username, password, login. How many of you have ever written some HTML code that does have web forms and stuff like that in it? A couple people? This is actually a fairly helpful tool. This is something that as a programmer, you might say, look, I'm gonna be making a lot of web pages. Why don't I go ahead and just build myself this stupid little tool, spend 20 minutes making it, 30 minutes making it, whatever, and now I can build a zillion web forms very easily. Doesn't Dreamweaver kind of do this? How many of you, how many of you have ever used Dreamweaver? Or uh, it used to be called Front Page. What's Microsoft's thing now called? You probably used front it in your 150 class. Page. What was it? Front Page. Or something. Still Front Page? Um, so Microsoft has a tool for um, building web pages in a WYSIWYG format. What you see is what you get. So you just drag stuff around. So you can drag in text fields and password fields and all that stuff. So we're building a pretty legit builder here, aren't we? Something that's interesting. If I do a search, HTML form builder. You'll see that there's all sorts of sites out here that allow you to pick like color schemes and stuff like that. So I'll pick a color scheme. We'll hit next. Let's delete the default stuff. Okay. So what are we going to do? We are going to enter in a single line text, edit that, call this username, then we'll add another field. We'll do a, this guy doesn't even give us a choice of passwords, inadequate. Say password, you get to choose maybe password out of this. Nope. See, our tool's already better than that. It's already better than this guy. Uh, add another one. Do we have a button? Do we even get the name our uh, our button? We don't get the name of it? Yeah, this is garbage. I mean, it looks it looks pretty, but I mean, the button just says submit. Plus, I might argue that ours was quicker to create, less clicking around and stuff of like that, right? Ours asked us for the exact information we needed, so we built a custom solution to do something that's out there in the web. Fine, this was free, but you know what? I'm gonna look at something interesting here. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I want to see page source. I'm sure there's a way to do it in Safari, but Chrome makes it very simple. So I'll just uh, view page source in Chrome. First of all, it produced all that, so a bunch of extra crap up top. Some of this uh, JavaScript stuff is so that it looked pretty with the colors and stuff like that, so forget about that for a second. 
Well, let's see. Here is our um, here's our label. Uh, where's our first text box? Here, this is our this is our username text box. Input ID is element underscore one. Name is element underscore one. We we were able to give like descriptive variable name stars, weren't we? Our tool is better than this tool for programmers. This was quick and dirty, but now we have code that's very difficult to work with. So we wrote a stupid little Java program that gives us better output with a little menu. This is the type of thing that you can do as a programmer with very little experience. We, everyone in this class has the background to do this, right? To produce something is actually fairly powerful. This would save you a lot of time. All right, so, um, should I give you a hard assignment over Thanksgiving? All right, so we'll uh, stop there. We'll come back after uh, um, Thanksgiving and pick up from here. Have a safe trip. If you're going anywhere, don't forget Bible study today, free lunch, noon, Lakeshore room. Just go to the cafeteria, say you're there for Bible study, you'll sign in, take a trade, bring your food over there. <laughs>